So pretty much every Android smartphone has its own unique vibe thanks to the launches that manufacturers chuck on top of Google's OS. These can change up the icons, fonts, desktops, pretty much every aspect of Android, while usually adding in funky new features like a bit of Kung Fu Torch action. Shwa! But sometimes, you know, you just gotta take it back to basics and enjoy a virgin Android experience unladen with crapware. And thankfully, Google isn't the only manufacturer that's sticking with a pure OS experience as we swerve towards the tail end of 2022. So here's my pick of the very best stock Android smartphones you can snap for yourself right now. And please do pork subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. Cheers! Now, your first choice when it comes to stock Android smartphones should always be Google's own Pixel blowers. Right now, you've got a choice of three of the buggers, the most affordable being the Pixel 6a, which comes in at just under 400 quid. Or if your wallet is feeling a bit more weighty, you can always upgrade to the Pixel 7 and the Pixel 7 Pro flagship phones. And most people will be perfectly happy with the Pixel 6a, which boasts the best camera tech at this price point, so you can point and shoot and get great looking pics day or night. And the Pixel 6a has another advantage over its brethren as well, and that's the fact that it is a proper pocket pleaser at just 6.1 inches. Sure, it's not rocking a proper premium glass finish like its siblings, but this thing looks and feels just as great as those more expensive blowers. And packed into that plastic frame is Google's own Tensor chipset as found in last year's flagships. This can handle everything up to and including some light gaming, although more intensive fare will stutter and stumble and the phone can definitely overheat at times. That OLED screen is a stunner, even if it does max out at 60Hz refresh, which is a shame. And yeah, it is quite small by modern standards, but I will very happily watch entire flicks on this thing. Because this is a Google blower, of course, you've got strong software support as well. Three guaranteed Android OS updates and five years of security updates. Plus, of course, you've got those brilliant Pixel exclusive features like the call screening, which is worth its weight in bloody gold. The Pixel 6a is water resistant. It boasts a decent stereo speaker setup. In fact, the only drawbacks of this phone beyond the 60 Hertz display is the fact that it hasn't got a headphone jack. It hasn't got expandable storage. Pretty standard for mid-range mobile. So this is certainly one of my favorite stock Android blows of 2022 and one of my favorite smartphones full stop at this price point. If you've got a bit more cash and you want Google's latest tech, then you're gonna wanna chuck some more scratch their way for a flagship Pixel. The Pixel 7 upgrades that primary camera sensor to a 50 meg effort, capable of capturing even more natural looking shots at any time of day, while the Pixel 7 Pro also chucks in a telephoto shooter for good measure, and it's one of the best zoom lenses of any smartphone in 2022. Both of these blowers sport Google's fresher Tensor G2 chipset, which offers an incremental improvement over the original, although it's still no top-end Snapdragon, and the Pixel 7 handsets can occasionally heat up a bit. As for the media chops, well, these flagships serve up some stunning AMOLED screen tech, topping off at 90Hz on the Pixel 7 and 120Hz for the Pro version. Add in a tasty bit of wireless charging and Google's usual excellent software support, not to mention those fantastic Pixel exclusive features, and you've definitely got yourself a pair well worth flashing about the place. And check out my side-by-side -side comparison of all three of these Pixel phones to see which one might be best for you. Now, if you're not swayed by a Pixel, but you fancy a compact blower just like the Pixel 6a, well, definitely don't sleep on the ASUS Zenfone 9. This 5.9-inch smartphone is one of the most lovable little buggers launched in 2022, and it's the perfect alternative to the also-excellent Xiaomi 12 if you want a compact smartphone, but with a stock Android experience. Some top-notch hand feel and effortless one-handed action is just the cherry on the cake though, because ASUS has crammed in Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset for proper beefcake performance. And they've also smartly improved the cooling system over last year's blower, so the Zenfone doesn't get all sweaty and moist under pressure, like when you're smashing these wee troll knobbers into mushy paste. And even more impressively, for such a dinky handset, the battery life is off the scale. You'll easily make it through the most intensive of days on a full charge with this thing, even with lots of camera play, a bit of gaming, media streaming, all that heavy lifting. Although where you do finally manage to kill the Zen 9, sadly there isn't any wireless charging support. As for the software, it's as close to stock Android as you could possibly hope for, with just a few extra bits bolted on top, like some nifty gesture support. You've also got a pretty bloody good gaming mode packed in there as well with all kinds of features similar to ASUS's ROG phones. However, don't dive on in expecting the same level of software support as you would get from Google's Pixel blows, because unfortunately it's just two guaranteed Android OS updates and then just over two years of security updates as well. 
And if you're after a stock Android smartphone, another quite jazzy alternative is Colpay's Nothing Phone 1, which sports the most talked about rear end since Beyonce. Yes, all of the headlines are focused on that flash and disco bollocks known as the Glyph Lighten. It is basically just a glorified notifications light though. And you'll find if you dive on beneath the literally very flashy exterior, you'll find a serious competitor to that Google Pixel 6 action. Performance is much better here compared with the Pixel 6a for gaming, while you once again have a gorgeous OLED display, this time with faster refresh. That camera tech is pretty bloody good too, coming close to the Pixel a lot of the time and rarely chucking up a bad looking pic. And you've even got support for wireless charging, something that's missing from Google's mid-range Pixel. The Nothing launcher does tweak the aesthetics with a too cool for school dot matrix design and the less said about those wallpapers and ringtones, the better. But otherwise, this is stock Android through and through with three years of guaranteed Android OS updates and four years of security support as well. So definitely an improvement on that Zen phone. Gotta say, when I first reviewed the Nothing Phone 1, the battery life was pretty cack and the face recognition worked about as well as a chocolate dildo. But thankfully, updates have sorted out these problems, so now it is one of the better Pixel rivals out there. Now, Motorola is another manufacturer who sticks with a stock Android experience on all of its smartphones. And if you happen to have oodles of cash to spare, and who doesn't these days, I would definitely recommend checking out its rather pricey but very bloody good Motorola Edge 30 Ultra. Yep, that's the flagship phone that comes with the batch bonkers 200 megapixel camera tech. This snapper uses 12-in-1 pixel binning, but the Ultra Res mode allows you to capture full-on 200 meg photos if you absolutely must. There's also a 50 meg ultra wide angle shooter and a 12 meg portrait sensor with 2 times optical zoom, while around front you've got a decent 60 meg selfie snapper. So no, there's no spoogerific dedicated telephoto lens unlike the Pixel 7 Pro, but if you can live without that, then it is a very nifty setup indeed. For the rest of the Edge 30 Ultra, you've also got a mighty 6.67 inch 144Hz OLED screen and stereo speakers, all slapped into a stunning sandblasted aluminium frame. And this phone ain't just a looker either. This mono blower is powered by a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, so it's a proper powerful bugger too. They also found space in there for a 4600mAh capacity battery with 125 watt wires charging and 50 watt wireless charging support, not to mention up to half a terabyte of storage. And if all of that is too much tech for your face to handle or you don't quite have the cash for the Ultra, well, no worries. Motorola also offers up the slightly more sedate Moto Edge 30 Fusion, which serves up a more typical 50 meg main camera that is absolutely fine for everyday photography. Performance is still smooth enough for the Snapdragon 888 Plus chipset running the show, while the 4400mAh capacity battery puts in a proper shift, giving you all day play, no worries. You've also got 68 watt wired charging, which fills a backup in a jiffy, although sadly no wireless charging support here on the Fusion. And last up, there's the Moto Edge 30 Neo, a pleasingly compact 6.28 inch blower, similar to the Zen 49 and the Pixel 6a. This comes in special colours handpicked by Motorola's latest partner Pantone, including this spangly Very Peri option. Around the other side is a gorgeous 120Hz POLED display, although the Neo serves up more basic performance than its siblings with a Snapdragon 695 run in the show. There's still enough grunt from the latest games, albeit on lower graphic settings if they're proper memory guzzlers like Genshin Impact. On the flip side, the Neo is considerably cheaper than the other two Moto Edge smartphones I just banged on about just then. And the 4000mAh capacity battery, while a little bit smaller, still offers good returns, helped by the more energy efficient platform. And you've got that 68 watt wired charging and full wireless charging support here as well, unlike the more expensive Fusion. However, the 64 meg primary camera sensor does lag behind similarly priced rivals such as the Pixel 6a, so if photography is a priority for you, I'd say maybe go Google instead. And I also gotta say, in my experience so far, that Motorola isn't quite as dependable as Google and some of its other rivals when it comes to the software updates, so if that's a big thing for you, you might be swayed elsewhere. And if you happen to be partial to a bendy smartphone, and who isn't, well, Motorola can also drain your savings account with the rather snazzy new Motorola Razr 2022. This third generation Razr reboot smooths over all of those bumpy crappy bits from the previous pair, boosting the battery life as well as the power. This thing runs off the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, so you can game away on whatever your lovely little heart fancies. The 50 meg camera does a decent job for snaps at day or night, and it can also snap your mug using that big and bright external display as a kind of viewfinder. It's a strong rival to Samsung's Galaxy Z Flip 4, and it's 50 quid cheaper too. Oof. 
And if you don't happen to have the cash for any of these motor or the smartphones, what I've been telling you about, well, no worries. Maybe try the Moto G82 instead, which costs under 300 quid here in Blighty. The highlight here is that gorgeous OLED screen. It's another 120Hz 10-bit eye pleaser, backed by stereo speakers for a merry old Netflix session. You've got a big old 5000mAh capacity battery, you've got expandable storage, and performance comes courtesy of Qualcomm Snapdragon 695. Not the beefiest chipset around, so no one's going to be dribbling into their neck flesh thinking about all of that raw power, but it is good enough for gaming on Call of Duty and PUBG, and even Genshin Impact can run at an alright nip at the lowest graphics settings. The Motorola G82's 50 megapixel primary camera sensor comes with optical image stabilization built in, and it's a pretty decent everyday snapper. That stabilization helps out in dimmer light, and you get sharp, colorful results the rest of the time. If you can look past the limited software support, the Moto G82 is a banger at this price with a lovely stock Android vibe to boot. And for even less cash than the Moto G82, you can snap for yourself the Moto G62. This plastic slab boasts water repellent design so it can get splashed without exploding and you've got all the usual features including NFC, a headphone jack and micro SD support. Plus of course you've got all the Motorola's bonus bits chucked on here like the dedicated gaming mode and the excellent karate double chop to turn on the torch feature which I bloody love. <laughs> the 6.5 inch IPS screen ain't nothing special but it does support 120Hz refresh while the Snapdragon 480 Plus chipset is good enough for your everyday shenanigans and some light gaming while also offering 5G support natch. The 5000mAh battery keeps you going all day too no matter what you're up to. And the camera may struggle in testing conditions, but it does pack in Motorola's AI smarts to help you capture the best pics possible. And last up, if you're after an affordable stock Android smartphone, we'll definitely check out Nokia's latest blowers. One of the best right now is the Nokia X30 5G, an eco-friendly mobile built from a fully recycled aluminium frame and mostly recycled plastics. Packed inside of this tree-hugging body is that Snapdragon 695 chipset, which once again does the job for gaming. While the 6.43-inch OLED display and the stereo speaker setup means good times when streaming a bit of the Disney Pluses or even your Uncle Spurt here on YouTube. Manufacturer HMD Global is rather generously guaranteeing three OS updates beyond Android 12, so that means you're covered all the way up to Android 15, so hopefully you won't be hoying this phone in the bin after just a year or two because it's out of date. And they're also chucking in a three-year warranty as well, so no worries if it muffs up. The 50 meg camera features built-in optical image stabilization and it's one of the better snappers found on a Nokia smartphone, working well even in quite low light, if again not quite up to those pixel standards. Like some of its other mid-range rivals here, the Nokia X30 is fully water resistant as well and while the 4200mAh capacity battery can't be charged wirelessly unfortunately, it will at least see you through a full day of use, no problems at all. As long as you're not constantly bashing those annoying little gribbly hill troll things in Genshin Impact, of course. The Nokia G60 5G is another respectable everyday smartphone for just 300 quid, with the added bonus that it's mostly constructed from recycled materials, so making one doesn't tit up the planet as much as other phones. And with quite a few years of OS and security updates guaranteed as well, hopefully you won't have to hoi it in the bin and replace it with another one in double quick time. The Nokia G60 is powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 695, so once again this phone breezes through most tasks with a spring in its step and doesn't disintegrate if you try playing games either. That 6.58 inch screen is mere IPS tech sadly, but it's not a bad panel, still quite poppy, if not quite as bright as I would have liked. Battery life is as good as most of the phones in this best budget roundup where you get plenty of extra perks like expandable storage and an actual headphone jack. And while the Nokia G60 5G isn't a patch on the Pixel and quite a few others here for photography, it's still fine as long as the lighting isn't being a proper dick. Strong contrast and dim conditions are not this phone's friend. And there you have it my lovelies, that's my pick of the very best stock Android smartphones you can grab yourself right now in 2022, or at least the ones that I've actually personally tested out and reviewed. So if I've missed out your own personal favourites, well, let me know what a massive donger I am down in the comments below. Please do tell me what your own favourites are and why. And also, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell and all the other YouTube shit. And have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you!